Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and today I'm here with Al Peacock, and we're going to share some of our insights from uh, reading the book of Simon Sinek called Start With Why, in which uh, he shares basically the framework in, uh, that companies have been using for years now to ensure their success. Simon Sinek, in case you don't know, uh, he's a very uh, highly regarded speaker. Uh, I mean, he has a TED Talk that for years has been ranked like number one. Uh, with over 37 million views, I think. Simon uh, is a great leader that has spent uh, the last few years inspiring others to do what they want to do, to have a better life, to contribute uh, to the world with their wisdom, with their uh, abilities, and to basically uh, share his insights on why some people, why some organizations and companies have scaled that high and have reached so much success. Because basically he found out that say, all follow the same pattern. So again, I'm here with Ella Peacock and uh, I think that we can start, again, an amazing read. And uh, Ella, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, let's start it with asking, first of all, how, how was the book for you? Because you read the book, I must say that I did not. However, I did watch a lot of uh, uh, Simon Sinek stuff. Uh, so I'd love to hear because I'm also interested about it. How was it? Uh, the book was great. It was, it was a different read again to the other two books. In not interestingly, obviously, they're all different. Um, but it was um, it was nice to look at more of the, the the philosophy and the psychology of marketing, sales, and business, and and just more of the how 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 much of a part we as humans and our minds and the way that our head works impacts success. Um, so it was a it was a great book to sort of look past the the surface level of all those things and and really delve into why why there are, are companies like Apple that are just absolutely wiped the floor and how how they do that um, that that was it was nice to go in depth on that because I, I don't know about you but it's something that I've wondered you think how, how are they doing that um, and he, he really does answer that question mm -hmm. sounds fascinating I, I know uh, from my experience I, I watched uh, the talk that he had on TED and it was amazing it was like mind-blowing he really did share some amazing insights on why some companies uh, scale and success succeed uh, the way that they did. And he also shares some big companies that actually completely failed with their marketing and then he like analyzed why that happened. And again, after like giving a one or two examples of great either people, it doesn't need to be companies, but either people, organizations, companies, and so on, why they succeeded, you, you can clearly see that he, He's on to something. I mean, there is a framework. There is kind of similarities between uh, those, again, great people, organizations, and companies. And, and this is great what you say. And um, one thing that I also love to hear, because, again, Start With Why uh, is a very, very highly regarded book. I mean, it's amazing. I saw a bunch of reviews about that. And so many people does re do recommend that. But Basically, after reading that, who do you think this book is for? Um, I think for me, I, when I read the other books, I my gut was that they would be ultimately useful for anyone that's creating um, and writing and selling. Um, but it was different. So when I think of um, sort of coaches and people like entrepreneurs and businesses I think this is both the value the value for is it, it's important to anybody um 
because it shows you the biology of people. So anybody that works with people is selling or communicating to people. It's beneficial. So, but even with coaches, so that it goes beyond being beneficial. It's not only beneficial for their own being able to create and, and improve cl and gain more clients and create branding that's and all of that, but it's also beneficial for people um myself like as a virtual assistant and social media manager yeah it's and a copywriter it's useful to for me to pass on the knowledge to people that i work with so it goes beyond being useful to me on a surface level it's actually invaluable to helping other businesses succeed um so I think for me, it's a book that I would highly recommend not only to businesses, but to people that are businesses that help businesses mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a recipe to success. Okay. So from my understanding, uh, first of all, uh, Simon shares a lot of insights on a book and it can be directed to basically everything you do. It can be uh, yeah. helping you with your marketing. It can help you with the, the message behind your business. It can help you in some way get to your customer, your prospects in a much more effective and a much more powerful way. So basically, again, uh, watching his stuff and his content, I can, I can agree that basically it can help anyone. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what you do or what your company or niche is I mean it can help you with everything that you do because again it all comes down to the reason why you're doing so and the reason why people should you know trust your brand and uh, like what you do in order enough to later also buy and support your idea or plan so so that's great and I know that Simon must have shared a lot of insights in the book but what is your like best takeaway from reading it? Um, I mean, beyond the obvious of start with why, um, which obviously everyone should do, it would be that you can't actually verbally express your why. So this is an interesting one. So uh, he discusses how it is actually biology, um, and it's it's uh, it, the, when. So when you when you ask somebody why they like a company, um, so I'm, I myself and an, I'm an Apple fan. So if you asked me why I'm loyal to Apple, I would list you probably almost indefinitely what I would tell you. It's, it's great to use it, it, and all these things and say, well, it looks pretty. But ultimately, the reason why i am loyal to apple isn't isn't any of those things because there's companies that offer if not better services um better technology at a cheaper price and all those things but i would still only buy apple mm -hmm. and that's because it the why so it is the why is about a it, it's you when you ask interestingly if you ask a lot of the employees at apple they would probably say that it's a lifestyle um and that it's it but it, it, it isn't apple aren't a, it isn't a lifestyle it just fits into our lifestyle so for me apple as a brand reflects how i want to be seen and that's where the invaluable part of why comes in, because as a brand, what it stands for is going against the status quo and thinking differently, which is something I align with, which I, I don't, there isn't a mess. I can't think of another company that I would want to brand myself as, um, I, I, uh, to be fair, in my la in when I think broadly, and I think about all the all the product I'm not a big brand person and I don't actually affiliate myself with if any many many brands at all but the few that I do are those that have a why but I can't that it's hard for me to verbally express the why and when I do express how why you should use that company I 
I list what's I don't tell you that they're just oh my god they're they're so this it, it's like when you say somebody asks you why you love someone you probably say because they've got great eyes and they're intelligent but it, it's more than that and then you say well I, I can't put it into words and that is because but it uh, the part of our brain the, my the best takeaway is that he talks about the part of your brain um that feels cannot communicate with words mm -hmm. which is is it genuinely cannot it, it, they, that is why people when they ask why they love someone they say well, that is, I don't know and they start listing things because they can't explain the feeling and that's why when people are asked why you love a company and and you you say well it is what they stand for and, and you start suddenly you start trying to figure out why do I love this company um because you suddenly sit there and think actually that's a very valid question because you've never considered it it's a feeling it's a gut sense um so my best takeaway is it's that is that actually the start with why is it sounds easy you think yeah yeah i just start with why um well actually it's not a verbal thing it's not a when and actually when you can verbalize it that's when you hit the jackpot because that and it take uh, it, it's hard to it, it's but when you can put start verbalizing what you stand for and not only you know what you stand for you but your employees know what you stand for your shareholders know what you stand for and your customers know what you stand for and you're consistent in doing that that's when you start gaining loyalty and your business goes beyond it goes beyond commodities and it becomes a brand so uh he um simon actually mentions um i i don't know if you're going to understand this reference um so do you know harley davidson's i don't, I don't think so who is he uh, so it, it it it's um it's it's a type of motorbike um okay. but it's uh, it, it, <laughs> my dad's um my dad actually Owns, owns a scooter so he, he and I actually so I've been to a wedding before this is a funny story I, I will add this in here I went to a wedding before and um I walked into this this room and you it, it's almost funny when I think back to it because I, I was in this room and there was probably 70% of the people in this room were men with beards with the same hairstyle and the same jacket with the same logo and they were like duplicates of one another and that it, it the and they all ride the same brand of motorbike and they've all and actually they even have tattoos of this brand on them mm -hmm. and that is when a brand is it that's when a business becomes a brand it becomes that has it, it's not they're not wearing a logo of harley davidson and they're not wearing what they they, they don't it's not because they really love those motorbikes it, it, they'd be insane if it was it's because of what they stand for it becomes a symbol yeah. just like that is a lot of loyal, uh, loyal customer obviously yes it, it, it's a symbol so a lot of the people in anybody in the uk will know what i'm referring to but it, it's it's bego it's no longer a product it's a symbol and apple's done the same when people have an iphone it is no longer a phone and they're no longer a brand they're a, they're it doesn't matter what the product is so it doesn't matter what the what is whether it's a, a computer headphones a phone they symbolize more Mm -hmm. and that's that can only come when you've created a why because that only comes when you have your customers are a, their affiliation to a belief and a values because people would not put tattoos on their body of a brand if it was just a brand it is so much more than that mm -hmm. and that that is that was the best takeaway was just how powerful something non-verbal can go 
mm-hmm. it's a feeling and it, and it really can like I honestly me and my sister laugh to this day about the day where we walked into this this wedding room and it was like looking at 50 of the same people and it was completely bizarre and at the time me and my sister were what I must have been like 13 and you like think whoa what have I walked into and like the word cult comes to mind and all those things but that's the power of great marketing that it it, it just showed it just right there and now now I think back at the time I didn't think I just thought this is weird (laughs) but when I think back it really is that that just was phenomenal power Mm-hmm. in marketing well when you first said uh, holly davidson i didn't understand what you said but basically yeah I, i'm familiar with the, the the whole motorcycle thing i, I don't think that yeah. we went here but uh yeah uh it's such a it, it was such a remarkable success so even i the the guy who hates motorcycles have heard about them too uh yes, it, 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 it's it's one of those names that you just know yeah. So basically, you, you, you mentioned something very interesting. Uh, the start with why, I mean, we always talk about that. But basically, uh, again, I'm not the most qualified person to tell about that. Uh, I would highly encourage you to read the book. But one thing that I do see, and I did learn uh, from Simon Sinek, especially his TED Talk, that by the way, I think all of you should listen to because it was a fascinating one. Quite short, shouldn't take too much long uh, to consume. But basically, he mentioned how this framework, how understanding your why is so much powerful. I mean, it's not just to help you ensure the success and loyalty of your customer, which is alone. I mean, a great thing. And just like Ella mentioned, this is what companies do to scale really big. I mean, companies like Apple, these are their like secret sauce, okay? They build... Uh, like an army of loyal customers who are, you know, blindly have this love for an appreciation for their product. This is why uh, when they launch something new, people are okay with staying on the line for like hours and hours just to get the first piece of uh, the, uh, the new Apple device. This is why people buy every single year a new Apple phone, no matter how expensive it is, okay? And no matter how perfect their uh, previous model is, I mean, it still works. It's still very fast. It still allows them to do everything that they still want. Uh, but again, they, they buy the new thing because this is how appreciative they are. And they want, again, they don't just appreciate the brand. It also helps them uh, be seen as what they want to. I mean, again, uh, something that he repeats a lot of times is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And uh, then they simplify, I mean, they explain, they resonate, the reason for buying it uh, it, it is a proof of what they believe in. So for example, they buy the new, again, iPhone device because they stand for technology, They, they stay for innovation. They want people to look at them and understand that again, they don't just, Stand for it. They they actually do what they believe in, which is again standing on the latest trends. And again, even though this is alone such a powerful way to ensure your success and loyalty for your customers, the why is actually way more powerful than that. In let's call it more initial step, which is the development of the brand, uh, the why you're doing this. The why you are here working endless hours on your small business or your idea that maybe one day, again, will become huge. But at the moment, again, it always starts from scratch. It always seems like uh, one goofy idea that the, the best ideas and the best, the, the best companies have once were ideas that were laughable by others. And the why is the reason why you keep on doing this. And I I know that in his interview, uh, interview, in his TED talk, uh, he mentioned the Wright brothers. Uh, And for some of you who don't know who the Wright brothers are, the Wright brothers are the first ones to actually make an engine, uh, how is it called, engine powered airplane, okay? And it was actually a fascinating story because they were actually competing against 
all the brightest uh, minds in the United States. This was the kind of time in which everyone wanted to reach the skies. Everyone were about, uh, uh, were interested in developing the same kind of idea. And there were actually, I mean, who were the Wright brothers? I mean, there were two no ones, you can say, okay, from the United States that had no formal education, really. I mean, one of them was uh, a high school dropout, and the other was, again, a high school graduate, but that's it. I mean, they were operating some kind of small uh, bicycle mechanic shop, and they were actually, again, the first ones to actually be able to do this thing, and they were competing against people that were heavily funded, uh, were much more qualified than they were. One of the people that the uh, United States back in the day believed that will be the ultimate, ultimate person to actually, you know, do this step and develop this idea was a guy, was a professor named Samuel something, Samuel something with an L. I would suggest you to just research on the, the topic, but basically this professor got from the government from the United States uh, uh, government, something, an outstanding amount of money. I mean, he had no financial issues developing the idea. He got something that I think in today's money is like $1 million. I mean, money was no problem. And he was well-connected. He was a brilliant professor. He knew all the brightest minds he had on his team, anyone that he could possibly want. So again, he, has, he had the minds, he had the money, uh, marketing uh, marketing conditions were uh, amazing. Everyone cheered up for him. Everyone believed in him. All the press were talking about how he is going to develop this uh, thing. And the reason that I guess he did not success, uh, succeed in that, and he launched two airplanes, but both were crashing right after they, you know, like uh, got to the air. But basically the reason for that, uh, as Simon explains it in the TED talk, is that he wasn't doing it for the right reasons. He was trying to develop this idea for the paycheck and for the recognition. He wanted to have one more successful invention and he had plenty back then. And one proof that actually, you know, proves the fact that he didn't do it for the right reasons was that as soon as the Wright brothers actually got a working machine what do I mean by walking? I mean, their first models were like flying for like a couple miles, I think about five miles tops, but it was a working machine, okay? It did not crash and they were allowed to do that. As soon as the, he discovered that the Wright brothers actually got a working machine, he quit. I mean, this proves that he did not do it for the right reasons because if he was truly passionate about the idea, if he was truly passionate about saving the world and doing the best, have the best development, he would have got to the Wright brothers and joined them. He would have said something like, okay, you have a very cool invention. Let's make it better because he had, again, the funds, he had the knowledge and understanding and he could surely help, but he just quit. As soon as he discovered that someone else beat him to it, the Wright brothers, again, had the worst conditions ever. They had no money. Everything was, all the money that they had was from their bicycle shop and it wasn't much. All their crew members were people, again, with no formal education. This is the best that they can do at the time. And they didn't have the understanding, the knowledge, but they have the passion. They had the obsession. They believed in their dream and they made it work. And they were working on it, again, obsessively and like crazy and at one point, again, they, was able, they were able to get a working machine. And the, the story is actually progresses. It's, it's far more interesting than that because even, even after they got a working machine, they try to like go to the federal government and they did not actually, they declined their offer. They had a working machine, but the government just thought that there's no freaking chance that two no ones, okay, beat such a, world renounced professor and actually declined their offer and it took them much more like working on the development until they got into a model that actually could have uh, flying like 25 miles and only then people started understanding that the right brothers are the one that have the best solution for that and this is where they became more popular and famous and yeah th this is basically the story so again it was a long one but to recap it i want to show you that 
The why is so much crucial in your business, not just because it will help you better market it and people to actually, you know, become loyal to your brand and your message, but because it will drive the, the, the push that you need in order to get to that step. Because usually getting to that step of people actually starting to know, believe in your product and you becoming popular and scale your business, it takes time. And most businesses fail during that time because of lack of passion, lack of, uh, uh, I don't know, obsession, you can call it. So this, this why is what makes you go through this step. And then it will also be the only reason, the one reason that will ensure that people, you know, fall in love with your brand and your message. So this was, this is my take of things. And I think again, that you should, everyone should watch this uh, talk because it's just, he, he showed it in a brilliant way. Um, so yes, uh, for the next question, what I wanted to ask uh, is again, we have your best takeaway, but as someone who just read a book, what was your favorite part? Um, actually, I think my favorite part was the fact that, so I could go on for hours talking about why, mm -hmm. why it's important. Um, on a, and I, I, I really could. Um, and like I said, one of my best, the, one of the best takeaways from it was the fact that he explains why the why works mm -hmm. um, and, and actually the biology and all those things. But what was nice was that throughout the book, he talks about how he, he begins the book with the fact that there is a oh, few people are made to inspire and to be leaders and that, that not everyone is in the world is built to be it can be like Steve Jobs, can be like Martin Luther King Jr. Not everyone can be that person. So you you can think, and I think, I, I'm starting to think, well, if you're not that person, this book's kind of like, well, what? it becomes sort of redundant. And you start to think, well, where, where do I fit? Um, and actually, he, he then mentions that actually, so he discusses it so you have a circle and the the middle of the circle is the why and that's where you have to do, that's where you start and next is the how and this was the bit that i liked is that the how is actually all these people so i i could i could be great i could have a great idea be really inspirational know my why but without the right people that know how that why means nothing. Mm -hmm. So all of these great successful companies that last, yes, it is detrimental to have the person that's got the why, that shares the why, that innovates, that knows all that. But they also need the partners that can create it. Um, when you think of all of the great businesses, there's always somebody else that did it as well that did the thinking that did the behind the scenes um that did um i, I can't i can't i can't pronounce his name he, he, um the partner for steve jobs what's his name basically these are the kind of people who are but more what, forgotten. yeah yeah um and actually so those people are as important as having it's as important and actually so he, he even he expands on this as well so you've got it's important that you've got your why and you, you that's great I create a, a brilliant idea and all this and then I have a great team below me or, or person two or three people that do the strategy know how to create that into a what but then you then have the employees as well that are doing the what and doing the and actually it's important that the people that are the employees as well are the right people too. So it's the why goes beyond it, it, it it's every single person is important in this. So when I say that the employees are important, what I mean is that actually they it it's 
it's valuable that that you have employees that want that resonate with your why and your message and they don't they're not they're there so no matter what they I, I reference apple again because people actually do refer to the employees as being like the steve cool like because no matter what microsoft offered them money benefits they wouldn't leave because that that's their that's that's their job that's where they are and that's because that isn't their job that that's their life it goes it there and he mentions he, he talk i i've there's a story where you um if you ask somebody what they do or what an employee does the employees that won't help your business succeed and that aren't aren't necessarily the right fit are those that will say well i i sell things i, I sell phones mm -hmm. those that are in the right are, are there for the for the right reasons they 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 sell apple's vision they sell thinking differently and they sell technology that allows a person to go beyond what they thought they could it, it, with microsoft they they originally their message was to change the world and it, it's and to allow a computer and give everybody that access somebody that when you simplify it, he talks about two people that are building a wall one person will say they're building a wall and somebody else will say they're building a cathedral it's about seeing the bigger picture um, and when your employees see the what am i really doing and so it's a, the hows and the what's it, it was nice then my favorite part of the book is that is that he he not only he he overwhelmingly talks about why it's important but he also talks about how each part of the each part is important actually that there's without he talks about the golden circle and, and actually balance and that your why yes great and but you need your how but actually as well it's important that what you do and the phones the products you sell or the services that you sell reflect your why and when your services so he references um volkswagen and vw's and actually when they they launched a I, I i this shows how i didn't even know this existed so they launched a premium model that was I, 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 he, he basically was really expensive and had had really great tech. It was it, it drove well. It had it was better than so many premium cars out there. Hardly anyone bought it, mm -hmm. and that's because what VW stand for has never been premium premium prices and all those things. Likewise, with when you think of um sort of when when you think of Apple again they they you don't think of them as a computer company you don't think of them as a phone company or an audio company you think of them they they was they're able to sell music and create itunes they were only making computers like they any other business most other businesses if they went completely a different direction you think why should i trust them mm -hmm. when you start with why you're you no longer are selling a commodity or a thing you're selling a mindset and that allows you to broaden um so i i think really the the thing is with all these questions you're asking me i'm coming back to the same points um and i feel myself doing that and i'm thinking am, am i answering the question uh but the, it, the book actually it's not the book is not group it's not a book about so many different things the book is about why and it talks about everything and actually at every at, for a great business to be successful it's got to come back to why so if my answers weren't coming back to that you'd be thinking that i'm missing something because actually your employees your product your how every single part of your business and what you do what you sell how you sell it should always come back to why um so i think that's the thing it 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 really 
no matter what how you frame it and what part of your business you're discussing or your your services there's, that should always be there and when you when that starts to disperse and when you start to lose that and you start to shift to oh well we have great headphones that have um, this we have great storage when when you start to shift away that's when you start to what he calls split and that's when you start to lose the chance to grow gain loyal loyal customers um and that's when you start to have to use manipulation and offers and well i'll we'll give you this money back and and all those things and that's when it becomes your your customers aren't buying the brand they're buying the product mm -hmm. you're losing the symbol you're bec you're becoming a commodity and when you become a commodity that you, you will always have to offer more mm -hmm. and well, and that's it, it so I, I it's interesting because you i just so much of me just wants to like i just want to say like just start with why um and he really just drill it into you mm -hmm. well i i think a lot of people understand that they should start with the why but they don't understand the the how crucial this step is and this is what we're trying to get across in this interview you mentioned a lot of great topics and i'd like to go back to some of them uh the importance of having a great team i mean a great quote by uh, Simon Sinek that I uh, heard was uh, that there are, there are leaders and there are the ones who lead. And usually the ones who lead are the ones who have some kind of a belief. They have their why and people follow them, not for the sake of, you know, being nice to those guys, but because they believe in the same goal. And one perfect example was Martin Luther King. Uh, was he the most qualified person for doing uh, what he did back then, back in the pre-civil uh, rights uh, time in America? No. I mean, there were a lot of great speakers. There were a lot of people uh, much more qualified than him. Actually, Simon re refers to him as someone who actually also had some bad ideas. But the reason that he was so successful, the reason that he had 250,000 people coming such a long way, some took buses for hours and hours, just to stand and hear him his speech in the middle of August, okay, right underneath the, the sun. Uh, the reason that they did it wasn't because they liked Martin Luther King, but because they believed in the same dream that he had. It was the I have a dream uh, speech, uh, not the I have a plan speech. This was actually a funny uh, uh, thing that he added there. But people liked the idea, liked the message, uh, and they made it their own. And this is the only reason why people would spend so much energy and time to follow you and to help you, okay, with your mission is because they believe it themselves. And it wasn't just a, a black versus white kind of thing. I mean, uh, there were like 25% of the audience was uh, were white actually. Uh, these were people who believed in the same concept, the same idea, same image that Martin Luther King had. And uh, this was why he had such a remarkable success. Again, bringing 250,000 people to Washington, it, it was tough. There were no advertisements back then. There were no website. There was no uh, uh, invite that was sent. Just People just came because they knew, they, were, they believed, and it was such important for them that they showed up. Uh, so again, they're the person who lead and there's the person who is a leader. Usually the, peop the person who is a leader is just, you know, someone who has the authority. It can be your boss. It can be your even president. And there's the people who lead, who share some kind of a view, some kind of an idea that a lot of people believe in and think it's inspiring. And this is the best connection. This is the strongest one, because again, you are working for the same motive, for the same goal, for the same message. You believe in the same stuff. And this is such a strong, uh, unbreakable relationship, okay? Um, so this was also important for me to address. And uh, you, you want people who also, in your team, you want people who believe in your mission, who believe in your goal, who believe in your you know, final outcome that you desire to get. You wouldn't want Samuel to work for you. Because Samuel, as I mentioned before, the, the guy that was actually competing against 
the Wright brothers and so many other inventors uh, during that time in the United States, he quit immediately after, you know, the paycheck ended. He did not have a passion. He wasn't very interested in making it. He understood that the Wright brothers beat him to it, so he quit. The Wright brothers uh, had so many failures during their, you know, an invention period. And it's actually, remar it's actually fascinating because they hand like manually uh, handling the plane, okay? So they were actually risking their life every single time that they had a test and they had numerous amount of tests. And every time before, you know, the final one, they crashed. So they were actually risking their life. This is how much they wanted it. This is how much they were passionate for it, okay? It wasn't about the paycheck. Okay, they, they risk their own money for it and their own time and their own life because they believe that they wanted it to happen, okay? And I, I don't think that there is any kind of proof that I can give you to show how passionate they were for it, okay? Risking your own life for that multiple times, I mean, that, that's remarkable. So you would want the right brother type of employee and not the Samuel kind of guy, okay? Yes, Samuel was way more qualified, but in the end, he wasn't the one who, you know, got into history for that. So, so this is amazing share and I love all, everything that you basically mentioned. And um, I think that one last question that I have before we go, and uh, you will go to read the book, uh, which by the way, I'll add a link down below so you can actually like grab it for free. Okay. Using uh, the audible service on Amazon. So just uh, search for it. But basically the last question that I have is, if you have any more insights to share with our audience from the book um i think i think i'd like uh, there's two things i'd like to share so he actually i, I mean I, I i don't know whether he named them such bizarre names exactly for the reason that i remember them um but i do remember them so as i said it all comes back to why um but he also so he discusses the celery test and um what I mean is the vegetable celery um, and this is this sort of explains why it is important that what and how you do things is fluent with why you do things um, and he, so he discusses if you were if you were in if somebody was offering you all these things and you so after you go to a conference and you chat to these people and they all offer you great things and they say this is how you need to transform your business you you scroll down accounts it's like this is this is the secret um and one of them offers you chocolate and one of them offers you cookies and one of them offers you a takeaway one of them offers you rice milk and one of them offers offers you celery and you think and you, you can buy them all and you could try them all but suddenly nobody knows what what your well what what of m and m's and chocolate got to do with celery and suddenly it, it just doesn't make sense and but what if you filter what you're being offered through your why to begin with so you're eating healthy suddenly all you have to try is the rice milk and the celery because actually all those other things they might be great but they don't align with your why mm -hmm. and when you when when you are providing a filter and you provide so when your employees and when your and when your shareholders and all these things know why all of a sudden cookies don't matter like it might be great that that's that but it doesn't align with your views um it, it, when you think to apple's advertising they have advertised with you, you too, and they've advertised with Pepsi. They would never advertise, even if they were offered Coca-Cola, they wouldn't advertise with them because they don't stand for their why. So their filter is, it's that filter. And I think it's a great thing to remember that when you're offered all of these great things, which you are in marketing, you've always, you're always, it's, you're always listening to these things, but it's about then when you listen and take them in thinking, First, do they align? And then when you figure out what aligns, then trying them because it saves you time and it also saves, it can also save your business because like with, with the reference to the VW, if they'd have thought actually does a premium product align with 
with our why they might have said no it doesn't we need to do this which doesn't mean they can't launch premium product it would just require different marketing and a different approach like other bit other other car companies have done a similar thing but they've they've given it a different name and that's been detrimental because people actually then saw it as a different thing mm -hmm. um and what I was going to say is the second thing that he mentions. The second thing is be, before you do that, I actually also want to address this uh, tip because I, I think this is a great tip that you can add to your toolbox on how to decide what way, what method, what approach to actually take. Doesn't matter if it's for your personal life, your relationships, or your business. So the car example was a great one because. I'm sure that what they had before was their whole marketing team, and we know how big their marketing team must be, drawing up ideas on what ways, what approaches they can take. And for some reason, they chose to make a, a more expensive premium kind of model. But if they would have go back and listened to Simon Sinek and took his advice and really think for a moment, is that really, you know, aligns with our brand, with our message, with our why? They could have saved a lot of money and a lot of, you know, kind of, I wouldn't call it embarrassment, but it, it was a marketing failure. So they, they could have, again, saved that. And sometimes it can be the only thing that differentiates uh, your success from your failure. Okay. Some businesses wouldn't have been able to sustain such a failure. Okay. Because sometimes we can talk about hundreds of millions of dollars. And I know a lot of companies that would go bankrupt after such, you know, a marketing uh, stunt that failed. So this is a very important one. Always go back and understand and think for a moment, does that correlate with your brand? Because I've seen numerous companies, not all small, but some are also big, which is even more fascinating because they have the greatest minds. They have remarkable marketers working for them, but sometimes they miss that very important step. Okay, they take a turn, they take a decision that wasn't very wise one, that wasn't very, you know, reasonable for their either, either customers or they, uh, their, you know, uh, history of their brand. I mean, it just, I mean, so many companies have done that. I, I know even a more modern one that was done was uh, Pokemon Go, which was, uh, I never played with it, but I had so many friends that uh, were addicted to this game. But this was a remarkable success. I mean, a game that was, basically Pokemon has been existing for so many years now. I remember watching it as a child. But Pokemon Go was a remarkable success. It was like worldwide, I think. And it was just amazing. But I don't know if you know that. I didn't know myself until I watched some kind of an interview uh, from Digital Marketer, by the way. And they explain how Pokemon Go had actually also some kind of a famous... It was a minor one. So chances are that you haven't heard about that, even if you are into Pokemon Go. But there is a chance that you saw that happening. I mean, they had an update that was just not reasonable for the audience i mean their audience very much i mean they had a, a, a very bad update their audience were just sick of it a lot of people quitted the game and i don't know what it was because i never played with it by but i remember seeing the forums okay uh, in this interview and people were like mad people were like outrageous because they did some kind of an update i'm not sure what that wasn't aligned wasn't aligning with their message, with their game, with what customers like. They didn't do the research. They didn't understand what their customer is after, what their desires are. And it was, a, again, a minor one, but it was kind of bad one, okay? A lot of people were mad, uh, even though it was uh, back when they, like, were in the peaking phase of their game. It was kind of bad uh, decision that they made. And always you should just come back to the why why are you doing this what is your message what what do your customers want why they first joined you why are they loyal to you what it is in this brand that they like and appreciate and you know make their, your decision decisions by that okay this can be a great tip and i'm sorry for cutting you but i wanted to address that so yeah I'll, i'd love to hear also about the, the second thing that uh, you wanted to share Yes, the second thing he mentions is the school bus test. 
which this is an interesting one. So he discusses if just so many many great businesses are uh, successful for as long as the founder or the leader is present, um, because actually the why. So th this is this is I think this is important to address as well, which is why I'm going to mention it before before we end the interview is that the why needs to become more than an individual. So many great companies, the pers especially so smaller companies as well, the, the founder is in the office, the, the, they probably speak to them and all, all of these things. And the why, the, when the decisions are being made by one person, it's easy for the why to stay, stay fluid and to stay relevant. But the why must become a culture and must become something that's um go it, it must become something that's fundamental to everyone within that um and so the school bus test discusses if so if a leader or whoever the founder was to hit be hit by a bus to be hit by a school bus and die would would the company continue to thrive or would it would the why be lost um and i think this is a really interesting thing to consider is without that person what's left mm -hmm. um because if when that person leaves which they will in that they might leave because they leave the business and they pick somebody else to take it over but they might leave because like they might not leave until they die but they will die like that this is this is a thing it's not at some point if you want your company to last beyond you your why has to be beyond you mm -hmm. you it can't just be you need to you need to make sure that it's integrated into everything that you do and the culture of your you it, it's so when you think of martin luther king jr for example mm -hmm. he, he's he's not here anymore but his message is i, I still I, I myself have listened to the i have a dream speech many times um i've, I've actually analyzed it um because i'm slightly insane um <laughs> and was inter interested by it and actually it, it was in, it's interesting to think what so uh, at apple actually he steve jobs left for for a short short while he he left i think he went to pixar i believe um i may be wrong um but he he left for a short while and actually they it, it started to get messy um and things started to get fuzzy and when he returned things the innovation came and they grew and grew and grew and they got to where they are today and that just showed that he was the why and the culture was the culture of why wasn't there whereas today i think if if he was to disappear for three months the business wouldn't the, the, the why wouldn't disappear and that's because the why is a culture, not a person. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think that's an interesting thing to think long term for your business is the school bus test. What happens when you can't make all the decisions? Mm -hmm. Because eventually the leader, eventually you have to delegate. You can't make all those decisions. And that's, that comes again, as I said, we're going, we're going in roundabouts, going back to the same things. But that again comes back to having um, a team that have the same beliefs and values as you being more important than a team that are great at what they do. Um, in such sense, I, he, he references a story, which is a really interesting story, where I, I, I can't remember what company it was, but it was, I feel like it was, it might have been Walmart. Um, and it, it's a story where actually the founder was, was um, sort of interviewing for a new CEO, something or other, to take over them. And they, <laughs> they looked down at the desk when they was having the interview, and um, the person opposite them being interviewed had taken their shoes off, um, like slipped their shoes off, and they had a hole in their socks. Um, 
and this is this so this was for a big job this is like ceo we're talking big company and they had a hole in their socks and they'd slipped the shoes off and he knew that in that moment that this person stood for what their business stood for because I, if i am right and it was walmart or it might have been a, a, a budget airlines but either way the values of this business was every man and customer first and budget friendly and all these things and he had a hole in his socks um which was to him he was like yeah you 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 get it this is not somebody that's here in it, he was just a he was just a man he was just a person he he, he was he, he was everyone else he fits the he weren't, yeah and he knew and it, it, it was that and so he knew that he was and and again he knew that he wouldn't be the person he wouldn't just be the person that people he wouldn't replace and this is a thing as well when so when you're a founder and you're passing on to somebody else that he knew that he wouldn't reinvent he would continue he wouldn't reinvent the business he would continue the business um and that's what you want your employees and you want your house and your that's that's and I think it was just a really interesting thing to think consider is is what happens when certain people leave um where where is the business is is the business when you great branding doesn't isn't a person or two people or ten people it's instilled mm -hmm. um um which I really liked you, the, you, because and that's when you go back to Harley Davidson. That is, it was. It's not a person. It is a symbol. Mm -hmm. it, it, and and loyal loyal customers. Like you, you've mentioned about people waiting in line and all of these things. When when you create a great brand and you have a great why and all of these things, actually, you don't you don't care that you've got to wait and inconvenience doesn't matter. Because none of those, it, it, you're, you don't care that it costs more. You don't care that you're waiting outside. It, it's more than that. It's, it, you're not, you don't, and like I said, it doesn't matter that maybe another company are offering double the storage, triple the speed, because you'll still buy a Mac. <laughs> um, and that's, that's the thing. That's where the, the alignment of values comes in. And that's where great branding is. And, and, so there's so many things to consider beyond the why of making sure that it's cohesive with the what's and the how's and making sure that when you when you go and when the founder goes that the message is still there and all of these things but ultimately it all feeds back to you've first got to have one mm -hmm. so i think that would be my and to to end end what I'm about the sort of the interview and end by my comments my biggest thing if any if you want to take away anything from what I've said and you don't want to, even if you don't want to read the book um that's fine don't read the book but have a why and start with it and because if you don't yes you you might you might succeed you might last three years ten years great mm -hmm. but you won't last forever because if you don't have a why you're a commodity mm -hmm. you're a thing i think that what you mentioned is very very like a very interesting question will your business continue if you die i think that's very interesting will your legacy continue if you someday unfortunately disappear what happened to steve jobs for example that apple basically continues and are still being highly regarded as a such an innovative company or you know all other brands and symbols that started something started some kind of a movement started some kind of a mission a goal a desire that was so deep and was like kind of transformed uh into something bigger than themselves uh, which is a company and even if you again disappear the legacy continues the 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 employees remain uh, and I think that the only reason well there are actually two reasons that, that people uh, to ensure the success of your company one will be that the business is just very profitable 
Uh, but the second and uh, the way, the deeper one uh, is that actually have your employees believe in your dream, in your goal, in your desire, in your, you know, in your, the output that you, you, you strive so deeply for. So um, this is the best and the strongest kind of reason why people will continue with that. This is the reason why people will wait in line. This is the reason why people like Wright brothers will continue to risk their lives uh, and spend their own money instead of, you know, they didn't have much. So instead of groceries and stuff, they had to live humbly and just do more experiments. This is the only reason. This is, I don't see anything besides that that is so powerful that people will continue on the path even like, you know, it's just, it's hard. It's hard. It, I, it either takes too long, it's too difficult, it causes you pain for doing so. But again, you have, it's more than just a desire. It's already, it's either a principle or a very, very like, again, a strong kind of desire to make something, to uh, to prove something, to make the world a better place. I don't know. So these are all great insights from the book. And again, guys, uh, Simon Sinek is not just uh, in charge of or responsible for this amazing piece. I mean, Simon, from what I checked, he has five different books that are all like bestsellers. And I think that there is actually, yeah, there is a second book for this. So even if you don't, if you already read Start With Why, there is Find Your Why that I just discovered that he also, he also has. And uh, again, you can claim that. And I think that everything he has to say is just brilliant. So you, you should take, definitely take the time into reading it. And again, I'm reminding you that there is a link down below if you want to claim your free copy of uh, Start With Why on using Audible service. I mean, you can do that. So just uh, search for the link below. And before we go, I think it was a very fine interview. So thank you, Ella. Uh, if there's nothing else to add, I think, well, we'll treat our viewers goodbye. What do you say? No, I, I, th I think it's time that they start with why. Okay. We, we, can, let, we can let them get busy. <laughs> Amazing, guys. So I really do hope that you've enjoyed this interview. Let us know what you think. Uh, we'll co continue on doing that. But again, we'd always love to hear your opinions on how to improve. So this is it. Again, thank you so much, Ella. I think it was a great interview and it was a lot of information that was shared here. So yeah, goodbye, guys.